Done. So what's the score, my man? Not bad. Four miles. Says I burned a lot of calories. Yeah, and it looks like you have a new time on bragging, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I gave a lot of energy. Hey, I wonder where that goes. Who cares? You're on a treadmill. We're here to exercise. But the energy has to go somewhere. Hey, I wonder if there's a way to collect the energy that I just used during that treadmill workout. You ever think about that? No, I never think about that. <laughs> I know, it, it, it's kind of dorky, but I, I can't stop thinking about it. Not kind of dorky, just regular dorky. I mean, honestly, eyes on the prize. What if I'm interested in a different prize? Then it sounds like you need a scientist. Hmm, maybe I do. Actually, you guys need an engineer, but I'll help. Come on. City Science with Mike Davis. Hey, I'll talk to you later. I'm gonna go ask about this whole treadmill thing. That sounds awesome. I'm gonna see you dorks later. Oh, nice friend you got there. Yeah, well, maybe he's right. Oh, come on. That's ridiculous. I don't know. I was running and I had this little thought. I guess it's kind of a weird time to be thinking of that sort of thing. Oh, you're missing the point. You had an idea, and that's the great part. You can't help the fact that it came at the end of a workout. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Mendelev developed a modern periodic table of the elements, and he was playing with symbols on cards like it was solitaire. It's just his way. I mean, what are you interested in? It's silly, really. Nah, just tell me. Well, I know I give off a lot of energy from running. I mean, the machine said I burned like 200 calories. Yeah? Well, I was hoping that there was a way to capture that energy and use it for something. You know, that sounds really cool. I like that idea. Really? Mm -hmm. My friend thought I was kind of dorky. You no, know, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think your friend's a solution to your problem anyway. And for that matter, neither am I. But you're a scientist. Don't you know about things like that? Yeah, I am a scientist, and I do know things. But I really think an engineer is what's going to help you now. What do engineers do? Engineers are innovators. An engineer is essentially responsible for building things, structures, design things, and make the world a better place to live in. All right, guys, well, I have an important up, question for you. What do engineers do? They, they, de things. they design stuff. They build machines, very big machines. They uh, realize dreams. They make cars and engines. What do engineers do? Engineers. Yeah. Engineers really, they solve problems. They're problem solvers. An engineer solves problems. Now they solve technical problems, not political problems or economic problems. You got a lot of those. Tell us about what's going on here. This is where we do our practicing for the robotics competition. It's for okay. FIRST Robotics, and we built these robots with, uh, together with a couple of high schools, and they're all set for competing, and this is where we practice. The robotics clubs uh, get a challenge every year, a competition that they uh, are handed, a challenge, to build a robot that's able to accomplish a series of tasks. We have two shops. Right now we're at the playing field at the Motorola campus. And we also have our machine shop. Which is also at the Motorola campus, but a different one. A few miles uh, down the road, it's like where we really build everything. Yeah. And then we practice uh, here. Motorola's been involved with FIRST Robotics for about 16 years. Okay. And at the moment, we have about 125 robotics teams around the world. This is an actual playing field for this year's competition. This field right over here? Yep, yep, right. this, is, this is the actual size of it and okay. they're practicing getting ready for a competition which is going to be this coming weekend. This is actually called the operator interface. So this right here is what helps us talk to the robot over there. And so we actually have, it's through radio control. So we have a radio here and a radio on the robot. And then we program this thing right here so that we can actually use these PS2 joystick controllers. So I understand how this moves Mario Kart, but how does this move a robot? All right, so we take the very long cable, plug it into this uh, adapter that our team made. Which Th they made this? Yeah, we. Uh, one of the engineers on the team uh, designed the board and soldered the chips on there and wrote all the software on here. There's basically different buttons on here. So we use the joysticks for some stuff. We use the buttons for other things. So there's a lot of programming involved. And that plugs into our uh, field controller or our operator interface. So you have to have one person that controls the base of the robot 
and that would be Rebecca. She controls it from going from point A to point B. And then you have to have another person that controls the arm and the, uh, the accumulator, which is the thing that spins over there, and the entire nest, which is that octagon. Okay. So we have to have two people that control it. Another thing that I think is really interesting with girls in science that I've seen is that if you can give them hands-on experiences and you can really say to young girls, you can do this, and you've got a perspective mm -hmm. on products or ideas um, that only you have because of who you are. A misconception about robotics is that it's dominated by men and that women don't really get involved. So, so how did you guys get involved in this? Once I came to all the meetings, I got really involved and I had a lot of fun. So I just kept coming and so I joined it for four years. So. <laughs> and you? And she was all excited, so she showed her DVD to me and I came to the first meeting and I was hooked. Well, I started out um, as a chemical engineer, actually. <laughs> and I realized I didn't like chemistry. Oh, <laughs> come on. You and I both. Shut up. What they get out of it is they get the exposure, of course, to the engineers, and they get places like Motorola. They get to see what people do there. Mm -hmm. uh, they learn about what engineering is, and a lot of them decide by, by participating in something like this that they actually want to be an engineer. Engineers are pretty cool. Scientists are cool too, you know. Yeah, but those engineers had robots. I don't see any around here. Look, if I needed a robot, you'd see one. Until then, let's just say that scientists and engineers work on different things in different ways. Fair enough. But what about my interest? Do you think that we can get energy from people working out on treadmills? Honestly, I don't know. I haven't done that kind of work before. But the science works out. Uh, what do you mean? Have you ever heard of thermodynamics? Oh, not really. Then let me fill you in. See, energy is a tricky thing to describe. Luckily, it follows some big laws, and there are two worth remembering. The first law of thermodynamics says that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. You can't get energy from nothing and you can't destroy it. Imagine taking a hot piece of metal and dropping it into some cool water. The metal cools down and the water gets warmer. In the game of energy, you can't win. You can only break even. Now, the other law is called the second law of thermodynamics, and there are a lot of different ways to say that, but one stands out really well. And that is that energy will always spontaneously go to a less useful form. Imagine a bouncing rubber ball. The first bounce is the highest, and the next is lower, and the next is lower, and so on. The ball is giving its energy to the ground, which is spreading it out. If the ball went higher after every bounce, that would be a violation of the second law. But things don't work that way. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Thanks to the second law, you don't get to break even. You're always going to lose some energy as heat. In short, energy is a losing game. First rule, you can't win. You can only break even. Second rule, you can't break even. Yep, that's how you play the energy game. Yeah, a game you can't win. <laughs> it's not my rules. Well, all I want to do is take the energy that I generate from running and turn it into something useful. Now, it's great that we know the rules, but I still don't know where to start. What do you usually do when you don't know where to start? Uh, to be honest, I go to the internet to uh, get a good start. That's a great idea. Really? If yeah. I was to do that at school, my teachers would say I was cheating. And they'd probably be right, but we're looking for inspiration here. And maybe there are some people out there with the same ideas. Well, all right then. All right, let's go to Google. On the internet. On Kinsey Street. Hi. I'm here to see the internet. That makes sense, I guess. I guess. Hi, Mike. Welcome to Google. Hi. This is my friend, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. How, How are you? How are you doing? Good. Good to meet you. And uh, you are? Chewy. Chewy? Hi. Mike, nice to meet you. you. How you doing, Chewy? Hey, Jesse. Hey, we're looking for some information, and we thought it might be out there on the Internet. Sure. We can help you with that. Okay. Now, uh, I know Google isn't the Internet, but it searches the Internet. How does that work? Sure. Let's take a look at the whiteboard, and we can uh, draw it out. Great. Okay. Thanks. To search the Internet, uh, you type in a term into our website. Okay. So this is where I'm sitting at home, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Sitting, you're sitting at home, okay. and you come up to the Google homepage, which yeah. is uh, one box where you type in what you're looking for. Right. Uh, we take that query, which we, well, we call that a query because you're querying, you're asking for information. That's right. We go ahead and first we hit our index servers because um, we try to store as much information about the web, but we need to look at where we have stored it. So, okay, so kind of like a, in a book, if you're looking for a particular spot, you want to uh, first find out uh, where, where am I going to look. And we mm -hmm. have an index server. Right, that first kind of stores just like the back of a in, in index in the back of the book. So that's like a table of contents. Like a table of contents or an index in the back of the book that yeah. says, hey, this is where the uh, where you would find uh, that information. Mm 